can a bio-based economy best contribute to green growth, sustainable development, and climate change mitigation? That was the central question at the Global Bioeconomy Summit 2015. More than 800 participants from around 80 countries gathered in Berlin for the summit at the end of November. The two-day event took place at the iconic Berlin Congress Center, just two months after UN negotiations on sustainable development were wrapped up, and a week before the start of the Global Climate Change Conference in Paris. Welcome to day one of the Global Bioeconomy Summit, the first community building platform to discuss bioeconomy policy globally. Organized by the German Bioeconomy Council, an independent advisory body to the German federal government, the event's primary goal was to identify challenges and opportunities in the use of renewable resources and to foster global governance of a sustainable bioeconomy. On the first day of the conference, one of the chairs of the Bioeconomy Council, Christina Lang, was optimistic. We have been very happy to receive all these guests here and all these colleagues. There's so many coming from all over the world. Um, the atmosphere is extremely good. I see networking everywhere. I see people listening to most interesting talks and it's impressive to see how bioeconomy is developing everywhere in the world and it's so diverse but still everybody seems to have a similar goal. The evening prior to the conference, an opening ceremony took place at the recently inaugurated new building of the Federal Ministry of Education and Research. Here, the participants had the chance to exchange views on the bioeconomy in a relaxing atmosphere. John Bell, you will make a start. And to listen to inspiring speeches from Joachim van Braun, the co-chair of the Bioeconomy Council, and Georg Schutter the State Secretary at the Federal Ministry of Education and Research emphasized the role of innovation in national bioeconomy strategies. The bioeconomy is becoming increasingly important to the federal government's innovation policy and this is probably crucial that it is not only part of a sustainability discourse but bioeconomy has become part of an innovation discourse. On the next day at the Berlin Congress Center, the German Bioeconomy Council presented an analysis of the bioeconomy's political relevance worldwide. The report shows that 45 countries have already integrated the concept in policy strategy and have also launched scientific and political support programs. Industrialized countries in Europe and North America see the bioeconomy mainly as an opportunity to develop innovative bio-based products and processes and as a tool for opening up new markets. Emerging economies in Latin America and Asia, meanwhile, are making use of their huge biological resources while at the same time investing in the development of new industry segments. Developing countries, on the other hand, are seeking to foster sustainable livelihoods through bio-based value networks and are also building up partnerships for technology transfer. The Global Bioeconomy Summit provided the perfect backdrop for participants from all over the world to discuss and connect these different approaches, a prerequisite to establishing a global sustainable bioeconomy. We will now have to have a new bioeconomy which brings into balance uh, the demands of people and the ability of the earth to produce. Uh, so that we can actually use good technologies for human fulfillment. In his presentation, environmentalist Ashok Kosla reported on a range of circular economy approaches in rural India. He was one of more than 100 leading international speakers who appeared to discuss policy concepts and concrete examples of bioeconomy. In a video message, Jeffrey Sachs, the special advisor to the United Nations and director of the Earth Institute, explained that an efficient bioeconomy will contribute to at least half of the sustainable development goals. Gunther Pauli, who has founded a number of companies and gained fame as the author of the book The Blue Economy, also underlined the need for a new paradigm. The bioeconomy is first of all 
a grand understanding of the powers of ecosystems, where there is no waste, where everything is cascaded, where there are multiplier effects, where nothing is done for one reason only. Articles from one of his companies were presented at the exhibition Bioeconomy in Everyday Life that showcased more than 20 products made from different natural resources. Among them textiles and dishes, rubber sourced from dandelion, and various types of bioplastics processed into things like engine covers and beverage bottles. In addition to the exhibition, the summit offered plenty of opportunities to discuss the social, environmental and economic aspects of a global bioeconomy. Experts from the field of biodiversity, like Maria Costa, emphasized the importance of exploring and properly exploiting natural resources. We won't have water forever, we won't have forests forever, and they deserve some respect. And I think bioeconomy will give biodiversity the respect that they deserve. A poster exhibition also presented over 60 bioeconomy projects from all over the world, while the German Bioeconomy Council presented a set of innovative flagship projects that were identified by an international Delphi study. During strategic debates and roundtable discussions, the summit participants explored ways that the bioeconomy could be improved. At the same time, issues like food security, rural livelihoods, and industrial competitiveness were hotly debated. In his talk, former EU Commissioner Yanis Podochnik, one of Europe's bioeconomy masterminds, explained the urgent need for a circular economy. He also outlined the role the continent needs to play in the change process. Europe was always playing a kind of a leading position because uh, we were pretty much open-minded towards those sustainability issues. It would be really important that we keep with that kind of endeavor and that we keep that flagship high also in the future. Representatives from Africa, such as Nivai Gibre Ap from the Ethiopian Development Research Institute, are pushing for a combination of industrialization and green growth. In the long run, they hope it will help overcome traditional rural economies and guarantee food for all. Green growth is important for Africa because it solves two questions at the same time. First, it helps African countries to strengthen their agricultural resource base and second it enables them to green the country through rehabilitation of the vegetation and reforestation. During the summit international organizations like the FAO, the OECD, the European Commission and the International Energy Agency conducted their own successful workshops. The FAO emphasized the role of small-scale producers. They have a very deep knowledge on how to produce and use biomass. They are the major producers of food. They, 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 they use a lot of land, they use a lot of natural resources. So you need to involve them because they know how to produce biomass well. Uh, they produce a lot of biomass and so in a way they are an asset to advance sustainable bioeconomy worldwide. FAO Deputy Director General Maria Helena Semido reminded participants that bioeconomy is not the same as sustainability and that any future development must contribute to food security. Speakers from North America, meanwhile, emphasized the importance of agriculture and food production within a global bioeconomy. In many ways, there's nothing we do that has a bigger impact on the planet than food and agriculture. And I think that it's really critical that we find ways of tackling these challenges. And so it's a global challenge and it requires a global solution. And so that's why it's important that we all come together and share that information. At the end of this summit, the nearly 40 members of the International Advisory Committee published a communique setting out the cornerstones of a global policy agenda. The common global agenda is sustainable bioeconomy. Bioeconomy which supports the sustainable development goals. But in each country, in each region, the way forward and the contribution to bioeconomy will be different. 
With this statement, the organizers also sought to ensure that the first Global Bioeconomy Summit would remain a starting point for ongoing international exchange and consultation on the bioeconomy. They announced that a follow-up summit would be held in two years. In the meantime, many participants agreed to promote the communique in their networks, promising to initiate dialogues with stakeholders in policy, science, business, and civil society. The development of a sustainable bioeconomy continues apace. In 2017, we'll see whether it's grown in the ways envisaged and outlined by the International Advisory Committee. See you then.